Hey guys, it's Kieran Troll, Kieran Troll Caller, and this is Kimmy Say, getting ready to play some more of our myth. Now, before we get going, just let's do a quick stats rundown, make sure everybody knows where we left off. So, yes, we did start Monstrology. If you guys missed last episode, you should check it out. I go through Monstrology and give you the basics of it. So we are a level 12 initiate. We have four training points. We got uh, a fair amount of gold and all sorts of cool stuff. Our damage is still sitting at the 2% bonus plus nine. We don't have any accuracy resistance bonuses right now. We don't have any of the second dairy stats, but we do have our power pips now at 16%, right? It's one of the reasons why I go for power pips so we can get those to go up. As far as my gear, same gear as we had last time. Got the great sword, got the great culture. We got all sorts of things working for us and we are going to go. Now today's quest that we are starting off with, guys, okay, is going to be Crocotopia. So we're going to talk to Bar we're going to talk to Bartleby and we're going to see how far we can get in Crocotopia's questing today. So let's go These go. Spiral keys are ancient I love relics the that cinematics. Used you to tell us Bartleby. The spiral chamber lies inside very nice. my very heart. Go into the spiral chamber and I will tell you more. Fantastic. Let's head into the spiral chamber so he can tell us more. The spiral is the magical thread that holds together our universe. There are countless worlds on the spiral. Wizard City is just the first. To reach okay. another world, a wizard must use a spiral key. Each key is unique. It will only take you to one world to use a spiral Okay, so key. let's go. You need to use the spiral Yeah, tool yeah, we got all this. Okay, let's go, guys. Crocotopia. Let's hit Crocotopia. Bam. Crocotopia, here we come. And just like that, guys, we are in Crocotopia. Let's talk to Tina. Welcome, Effendi. You come to wondrous Crocotopia at a most dark time. We have been cursed okay. ever since the yes. one you called Malister, Malister arrived. Ah. Oh, the Tuts have come back to life to crush us under their oppressive fists. <laughs> Please speak with a sergeant major in the Oasis if you would help rid us of this Malastare person. Okay, well, that's what we're here to do. But we might get we might get on sidetrack. So let's see let's see if we don't get sidetracked. There we go, Sergeant Major Talbot. Oh, greetings, youngster. You must be one of those wizards from Wizard I City. I love the Marleybonians. Some of my Sergeant favorite Major characters Sylvester in the game. Sergeant Major Sylvester Quimby Talbot, Talbot the III, Third at your service. Fantastic. Order of the Fang. Yes. I think I heard Professor Winthrop mention that name. Okay, guys. He and guys. his crew are still excavating when they should be evacuating. You'll find Professor Winthrop inside the pyramid. Perhaps he has some information that can help you. Okay, and let's go talk to the professor. To keep him safe. Now, today, do we have a goal? Yeah, we're going to get as far in Crocotopia as we can. Now, just a reminder, the whole idea of this is to go through the entire main quest line with our Myth Wizard, doing all the Myth quests, and picking up every starred quest. So let's talk, start with Professor. Come in, come in, watch your step. Things are amiss uh, yes. down here. Uh, you say you are looking for the Order yes, of the Fair. As a matter of fact... I was just researching them when the crocs came oh, to life and yeah, attacked. Oh, yeah, we gotta help them with the crocs then. When the crocs attacked, my diggers and I had just found an ancient obelisk describing the Order of the Fang. Very good. We had to evacuate everyone. If only I could see rubbings of the inscription on the obelisk, I could learn more about the Order. Very good, Do you very think good. you could I make rubbings for me? You can find Alrighty. the ancient obelisk at the dig site in the Royal Hall. Okay, so let's go get the rubbings for the good professor. Okay, so... Now, I will give you a heads up. We do have a main quest line that we haven't done yet. Okay. Oh, and like I said, I'm, o I'm, I'm always going to be picking up the side quest because you never know when you might be able to get, to get to double dip by fighting exactly what they need you to fight, even though you're fighting it for other reasons, right? So I'm a big fan, guys. So even if you're not a big side quester, I think it's worth getting them. Now, you just got to keep track of, you know, your quest, your quest bar because it can get pretty filled and everything. Okay, so... We need to hit that royal obelisk over this way. And if I see a side quest, I'm going to pick it up because I love my side quests. That's for sure. Okay, we're in the dig site now. I think the obelisk is just right up over this hill, I believe. Oh, and a quick turn. Yep, that's the one. You make the rubbings. Very good. Okay, now let's get back here. Now, unfortunately, here, here, ooh, let's make sure we get that quest. From the archaeologist, Dr. Gordon Fleming. We were digging in this area. When, could you go get my equipment for me? I have it packed in wooden <laughs> crates. 
Those crates are scattered everywhere. Well, and this is an easy quest to do because we're going to be walking by a bunch of those crates on the way back. Unfortunately, at this stage of the game, we had, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure I had a um I had a pet because there are because you don't have any teleport things around here, so it's going to be a lot of walking. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not opposed to walking, but boy, you know, it is slow, slow moving without a pet. So, I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and pick up these crates as we move through here. Ooh. And, um, yeah, I'm going to be setting this guy up with crafting because I, there's going to be some stuff we're going to need to craft. So I am picking up reagents as we go through. So very, very good. Okay. Nice. Did we get them all? I think we got them all. Yeah, we collect all the crates. Fantastic. See what I mean? That didn't take up any time. It really didn't distract us much. So that's why I pick up those side quests. Plus, they give us good experience. Like, you can find yourself, like, at the end of the game. I was finding myself towards, like, you know, the end of the game to be 10 or 12 levels ahead of most guys who weren't These doing side quests. These rubbings are perfect. Let yes. me decipher the tech. Very Professor good. Professor Winthrop studies the rubbings. And ah, and grows frightened. My word. The ah, order see of your the group of croc wizards who wrote the rituals. Ah. Who wrote a book of rituals okay. called the Crocanomicon. Lots of knowledge. Perhaps this order has something to do with the crocs attacking well, us very, now. They could be. Did Malastare put them up to mm, it? He could have been done doing something similar. While I was running for my life from the croc attack, okay, I saw Bitty Narini, Bitty Narini yes. take an ancient tablet. Bitty Narini must have the answers we're looking for. Okay, for it's time to go get Bitty Narini. Our fighting men are trying to protect our archaeologist. Could you defeat Narini Crocs until you find a croc carrying the chamber key? Okay, guys, and so take there we go. Him? First mission. Now, whew, whether, another reason why I'm going to do side quests is let's be honest with you, I want to get my nicer spells quicker. You know, and I know some guys aren't into that, but I, like, I want to get my nicer spells a lot quicker. And by doing the side quests, that's going to bump me up in levels a little, a little bit quicker, put me about three or four levels ahead of the regular guy who's not doing the side quests. Okay, that was a bad choice. I was feeling a little bit invincible with the speed of my mount. Okay, a charm slave. Not not much of a threat, but when I when you don't have a spell right away to take care of him, more of an annoyance. So let's go ahead and get him knocked out of the way. Oh, that's right, guys. In Crocotopia, you don't fight one by themselves. You got to fight two at a time. Uh huh. Two of the areas back in Wizard City that we never went to. We did not go to Colossus Boulevard. That's considered a side boulevard, which is kind of nice. Um, and there's, there's nothing wrong with skipping that. It's just that, you know, you lose the opportunity to practice fighting due to opponents at once. So that's like one of the areas on, on Wizard City that you have to, that you are going to be loaded up with two opponents at a time. And that's, that's okay. The other place is going to be um, Crab Alley. Okay, it's a Crab Alley? Yeah, it's Crab Alley. And that one is a main quest, so we will be getting involved in Crab Alley maybe next episode. We'll take a little break from Croc to go down there and work through the Crab Alley quest line because that is considered a main quest line. So just be aware, that is coming, okay? So let's go ahead and finish this guy off and then we can get back to our main quest line. Now, sometimes, guys, if I get pulled into these, I'm not going to go through the full fights on them just because, well, you know what, they're kind of taken away from our time. But um, I'm going to go ahead and finish him off since we're here at the end. And while well, I was just using it as a perfect moment to give you guys additional info of what we're going to be expecting to do here. Okay, now let's go fight some Narinis. Let's go take some Narini Crocs down. Oh, yeah. Very, very good. Good. We're starting to get jewels now because we're going to use these jewels are going to be really. Really going to come in handy here. Okay, there we go. There's a couple of Narini Crocs. Let's take these guys down here. Very good. Hmm. Ooh, you know, I should I should have dumped the Monstrology stuff. Okay, well, let's see here. Oh, I not, can't quite get rid of that guy. So let's go ahead and bring a Golem Mini. Bring, yeah, bring the Living Puppet out. He's going to help us here. Sorry guys, I gotta adjust to my thinking again because I gotta gotta use the strategies that are gonna help us be the most successful here. Ah yes, okay. Now again when you're playing against two opponents each time, it's kinda you know, you gotta start adjusting the way you wanna you want the way you wanna take them on and everything. Like he's gonna take care of the key guy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw a trap on the scout so we can go ahead and I guess I could just pull it. Cyclops. Him. Yeah, my bad. Let's pull out one shot and give him a chance to take on one of these guys for us. 
There we go. Living Puppet doing his job. So I'll take this guy out next. Ooh. Bat for bat. Not quite tit for tat, but bat for bat. Get it? Get it? I guess not. Okay. No worries. No worries. That was that was kind of a poor pun. What? That's not even dad joke worthy there. Okay. Very good. Let's knock this guy out. One shot in the house. Very good. You get that one shot, one eye, one shot? Yeah. Love that hammer coming down and doing the crushing. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Let's go ahead and get rid of the other guy. It's a good thing we have a fantastic living puppet here who's going to go ahead and do some damage. Woo! Very nice. Very, very nice. Now, of course, as we start moving up, we'll be adjusting our, ta our tactics as, as we continue to grow with our wizard. Now, one of the cool things about a myth wizard... Oh, really? Well, maybe we'll be able to knock out all three Neridians then. Very good. Yep. Don't always mind if somebody gets drug into one of these fights, especially when, you know, it's one of those where you have to defeat three before you can move on. Um, otherwise, you know, I'm stuck in two fights, right? Yeah, there we go. Perfecto. Okay. Let's see. Let's go ahead and give this guy a good hit. And then, um, yeah. Hopefully this um, fire initiate will bring some action. Come on, Jason. Give us a spell here. Yeah, come on, Jason. Give us a spell. I, I know I'm an initiate conjurer just like you. Let's go, Jason. Oh, my goodness. He just got himself sucked in, right? Ah, there he is. He's selected. Now, a living puppet's going to keep the pressure on because... Yeah, that's the way it is. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that is a huge benefit to the Living Puppet. He's just going to be hitting every single round. Are you ki kidding me? Shields? Okay, this is a noob over here. Oh, I mean, shoot, by the, the amount of effort you put in shields, he'd be dead by now. Okay, anyways. Yeah, he had plenty of pips. Okay, well, we're done with him. And maybe we're done with this particular quest. Fantastic. Back to Professor Winthrop. Check it out. One of the nice things about um, Crocotopia is it does give you a lot of sellable stuff. You know, like one of the things that you want to do early game is um, sell a lot of the junk they give you. Because with that gold, you can turn it into a couple of things. One of the things you can turn that gold into pretty quick is... Uh, well, not pretty quick, but you can eventually turn it into as a house. And a house is something we're going to be looking into here later in the game. I'm not sure what type of house to go for. If you have a cool house you like, leave it in the comments. Maybe you we'll end up saving up key. for that particular well house. Done. Well done it is. Our men here have their hands Ooh, full we got a one-day dromedary. Crops. Don't need it, though. The archaeologists are no help, I'm afraid. Can you defeat Beatty yes, Marini we can. in this chamber? Let's do it. Claim the missing ancient tablet from him, and perhaps I can find out how this madness started. Very good, guys. We are just rolling through this. So let's go ahead and take care of... Oh, look at this. It's going to be, like, way out there. No teleporters in Croc as of yet, which is... Uh, oh, my goodness. Now, I don't know if that's just something that... Because I wouldn't think that'd be that difficult to, um, to, to code in, but maybe... Maybe it's because they're getting ready to do a redesign of Croc. I don't know. I mean, don't don't quote me on that at all. But maybe we haven't seen teleporters appear in Croc yet because they're getting ready to do a redesign of it anyways. And if they're getting ready to do a redesign of it, which I think a lot of people would love to see an updated Croc, because Croc, again, it's one of the oldest worlds in, in the game as far as for timelines or how long it's actually been in the game. Oh, you know what? Since we're over here, let's go ahead and grab that experience over here from Dr. Fleming. And he'll give us another thing we can double dip in here pretty quick. Okay, Fleming. Ah, wonderful! Since... Okay, let's make sure we are on the right thing. Because we are going after BT Narini. Oh, man. Freaking fire. Fire in my way. Okay. Back to the BT Narini episode. Okay. Very, very good. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Now, it's always good checking those recipe guys as you fly by because you never know what you might find in there. You know, one of the cool things of playing some Wiz is coming up with a really cool-looking stitch for your character. Oh, yeah. 
Now, how do you find those stitches? Well, sometimes the very best stitches can either be a crafted item or they can be an item from a secret boss you're not aware of. And that's where you can get some of those really awesome looking outfits. It does take some research and some time to do it, and sometimes it takes a little bit of grinding too. Sometimes you'll have to work over some of those secret bosses, or you might have to get a whole bunch of stuff to do the crafting. But if you're looking for that one particular look for your wizard, definitely worth the time. Boy, I really gotta change this guy's look right here. That's actually looking kind of crocotopish, the, the robe is. Not liking it though, not liking it much. Okay. You are not worthy of standing before oh, me, yes, wizard. Bitty. Fall to the floor. Oh. Maybe then I shall show mercy on you. Very good. I'll tell you what, the one thing Krakatopia does have, some of the best, you know, smack talking smack talking villains. Oh yeah, just watch and listen to him. We'll be pointing them out as we work our way through. Okay, so we got a Narini sentry. Very nice. We'll be able to one shot him without too much trouble. Let's just put a trap on him to get started. Awesome, awesome, awesome sauce. Okay, now. Do I have him? Yes, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and make sure he is out of the game. And again, that follows my strategy. This is this is the this is the Kimisei doctrine. Knock out, knock out the minion first. Get him out of the way, so that way you don't have to be hit twice every round. Push. Totally, totally taken care of. Okay, now let's go ahead and start taking care of Mr. Narini. Um, let's start off with a living puppet. Let's get a living puppet summoned. That way as I'm pulling up pips, because I gotta wait a little bit to get up pips for another attack, he can go ahead and start doing some round by round hits. Very nice. Tell you what, these, these, these uh, minions are fantastic. Now, I'll be honest with you, if we start looking at the minions, the, I do kind of rank them as far as usefulness. The Gollum minion is super useful because he'll just keep on hitting him every single round. And that is a huge benefit, you know, to keep the pressure off you. The downside to the Living Puppet, pretty weak. I mean, pretty much anybody can one-shot him. I don't, I, I pretty much any boss will one-shot him if they think about it. But if he's doing enough damage consistently every round, that's gonna keep the pressure off of you, and that works really well. Now the trolls are pretty good. They're gonna do, they're gonna keep some damage. They're gonna do some higher level spells, some tooth pip spells, etc. cetera. Um, the downside is that they're gonna cost you pips to throw them in there, okay? So that is going to be um, the downside with the trolls. Now the cyclops, you can spend, I believe, up to four pips to get a pretty rock and roll cyclops. And those guys, they will bring the hammer, oh yeah summon left and right um, but still not my favorite minion okay not bad in a fight but they're still costing you pips so you gotta save the pips up some of them do that now one minion that I do not mind summoning I mean pulling up the pips to summon um, is the Minotaur minion which is the fourth minion you get now he is all about distraction and keeping the guy off your back I don't know if you've seen a Minotaur minion work but it is poetic especially when you get into those those um, higher level boss fights you know, um, because what he's going to do is he's going to distract that guy. He's going to keep him off your back so you can take care of business. Fantastic stuff. So, like, out of the minions that they give you, you know, Living Puppet and um, the Minotaur are two of my favorites because they work really, really well. They're pretty easy to use. And for the levels that you primarily use them, you're going to get a lot of use out of them. Or at least that's my opinion. That's my opinion. Now, a lot of guys are uh, really into um, Talos, but I'll be honest with you, I had much better luck with the, with, um, the other guys than I ever did with Talos, you know. Now, again, we're going to be working Monstrology pretty heavy with this wizard, so you're going to also be able to see how we add Monstrology into the mix using our treasure cards, because I think that's where Myth really comes alive, because with Monstrology, you're not limited to one minion anymore. If you have your Monstrology filled out, you can fight with with a three other minions. You can have a regular summon minion, like, you know, Living Puppet or a Minotaur, and then you can have like two field guards up with you. Now I'll tell you what, that can be pretty awesome, especially if you're fighting minions that aren't gonna do a whole bunch of AOEs right away, you know, or if you find yourself in fights. Like if you have a two on four fight situation, you are setting yourself for much more success by having those minions side by side with you when you're fighting two fairly um, tough bosses, you know, or if you're a double boss or a boss and a really good minion, you know. 
Or let's say you get into one of those fights where you're fighting a three on one. Well, if you pull those guys in, that's going to give you a much better chance of survival. Okay, Professor Winthrop. Ah, the ancient tablet. Ah, now yes. I can get the rest of the, the rest story, of the story. On the Order of the Fang. Professor Winthrop studies, he studies the, the tablet and the Order of the Fang oppose the evil. Very tuts. good. They plan to use the Croconomicon to put the tuts sleep. To okay, sleep. yeah, yeah. And we had to come round and wake them up. If I, I think the Order of the Fang still exists. Great. Hiding That's somewhere what we need to know. in Crocotopia. So we I must want know to where it's kept. We've discovered a map room that might help locate very them. Very cool, very cool. Unfortunately, it's located through the palace we can't get inside. My assistant, Malcolm Danforth, has been working on a way to enter the palace. But very good. That's what we need to know. About, I'm afraid for him. Please help him. You'll find him in the excavation room in the Chamber of Fire. And we are definitely going to do that, but unfortunately, guys... That's all the time we have for today. So we're going to hang out with Professor for a little while, and we're going to say bye to you guys here. This is Kieran Trocolver, running by, run by Kimmy Say, and we're having a great time working our way through Crocotopia. But don't be surprised if we take a break from Crocotopia to run Crab Alley. This is Kimmy Say. Catch you later, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>